Hey everyone, uh, just got back from a local Japanese uh, like Home Depot hardware store type and it's just called Homes. And uh, what I wanted to do today was, because it was suggested by uh, Matt on I think the last video. He's got a really long name but Matt is in the beginning. And he wanted to see the selection of uh, pouches at this, at this store or one of these stores. And I thought, uh, on my way back from, from breakfast, it was right next to it, and I like to pop my head in uh, every now and again to see some stuff. But uh, I decided, yeah, I'll take a few pictures of the place just to, um, just to, I guess, maybe make a, make a video like this if anyone was interested other than Matt, and I'll just put it out. So I guess we'll go right to that uh, now. Let me get my phone out, and uh, we'll see it. All right, this is what the hardware store looks like. As you can tell, I just grabbed it from the web uh, because as you'll see next, it was a dreary day in the winter. This is like a nice fall look, but um, it's pretty large as you can see. Right uh, past it, there is actually the ocean. So uh, this is right on the edge. You can see there's like a gardening center uh, that you'd find at the Home Depot kind of over here. And then They've got a second floor, which has like clothes and like a cafe and stuff. But the first floor, you'll see it here in a second. This is the picture I took on my way uh, on my way there. I'm on the other side. I'm on the right side down here, which you can't really see very well. But I'm over here. It's very weedy, nasty. There's um, all those trees are dead right now. But as you can tell, this is the homes I went to. This is a loading dock, uh, loading bay that they do shipments out of. Pretty, pretty good place. All right, and then there's a, a sports store. But anyways, let's move into the actual building. So this is the floor plan right when you walk in. Luckily, it's in Japanese and English. This left side over here is that gardening area that we saw, and uh, the actual entrance is here in the middle. Uh, you can take a left, go up the escalator, have fun. There's a McDonald's in here somewhere. This is it, McDonald's, that red bit right there. All right, so you have gardening. You it, When it says woods, that's going to actually be their lumber section, which I took a picture or two of. Um, you've got right here hardware, water supplies. That's uh, gardening as well as uh, plumbing stuff. Tools and work equipment is where I took most of the pictures today. That's where uh, I enjoy uh, most of my time in the stores here. But... Take a look if you want at the rest of it. They've got bikes on the bottom right. They've got car supplies. They have a whole electrical section with um, with wires and and uh, chandeliers and lamps and home security systems and such. Yeah, and then daily supplies like food and cleaning. But yeah, they have a lot here. They have a lot. And I was when I took the picture, I was down on the right here a little bit further. All right. More into the store. All right, so we have clothes. They have work clothes. There's a whole aisle of work clothes. And lots of denim. Lots of uh, lots of denim work clothes. And if we look at the prices, just to get an idea of what we're looking at, obviously it's in yen. But when you take a look at yen, the old rule was uh, take those last two digits off. So take the one zero off and you have around the American value, so $77. But the Japanese yen has been weak for a while now and it's like 30% off. So take $77 and get 30% of that off and you'll get what the price that I'm actually paying. Uh, Cause I get paid in American, American dollars. So everything's 30% off when I'm here, it's nice. That's why you might see that I have many things in my videos cause uh, it, it feels cheaper cause it is for really good quality. But work clothes, if you haven't seen the Japanese love matching with their tops and bottoms. So a lot of these come in sets or if you don't buy in sets, you'll look real awkward. Uh, I took a picture of their lumber section. Yeah, this is a bit of it with the man who is confused. He's not always there, but uh, if you go there, you'll see this. Another picture of the lumber section from another angle. Yeah. Typical, as I can tell, lumber section. I have not done too much investigation. Lumber is not my gig. All right, I took a picture as well of their uh, shoe, their work shoe selection. This is their ASICs section of work shoes. All of these are composite and steel-toed shoes. This is not like um, an academy, right? These aren't running shoes. These are specifically work shoes. And they look very trendy, right? So that's nice. Um, so yeah, if that's your gig, you can get them here as well. 
I took and went to their regular shoe, uh, shoe like non-ASIC work shoes, and this is their selection. As you can tell, lots of kind of sneaker looks, lots of sneakers. A um, little bit more into almost like a hiking boot kind of look. You've got like camo. These are all mostly composite toes. As you get further down to the left here, you don't have the composite toes. Um, and if you want boots boots, they've got these moon age kind of thing. Um, moon boots <laughs> look real funky look real funky so not my style not my style but that's what they wear here goes well with their uh, <laughs> double decker denim right not a not a huge fan of that okay now we're jumping a bit more into the tools what you might be more interested in i just took fun pictures before now let's get into the tools this is their engineer section uh, just a display out on the front. It's open to the rest of the shop, to the store. You don't have to go down any aisles for it, as you can tell on the other side. They have, let me just go in. You can take a look uh, your own. They have like screw extraction pliers that they're famous for. They have like cross-cut pliers and the kind of lineman looks. Needle nose, uh, just cutters of all types, slip joint and uh, water pump pliers, kind of a channel lock look. And as you go down, you get these weird kind of T-handle looks and vice grips and a bunch of bit extensions down on the bottom. So a good selection, a good selection of engineer. But no one, no one is buying these because they're not really known for that. What you will always see around here, these, right? These are the big buyers. And as you can tell, they're priced for it. There's a dog outside. You might have heard it. That's all right. They have sleeves, though. You can buy sleeves for them. I have uh, on the outside of my home always either motorcycles or small old women with their dogs who fight each other. So hopefully that doesn't pop up. Next picture. All right. So on the aisle over from there is a selection. Oh, geez. I'm already over here. I'll show you. Um, not in this aisle um, that I'm showing you, but one aisle to the right of that is this which is Japanese hand saws Japanese hand saws which are all the rage to some a lot of carpenters and such because apparently the hand saws just work so much better in this fashion in this form than in the typical form so yeah if you want to take a look those are the prices you'll be paying geez let me try to get the actual prices there we go I'm pretty new to, to actually recording my screen right so it's a little bit awkward moving. They also have regular-ish kind of saws that have a little bit of a curve on it. So maybe that helps. And then almost a regular. They, they do their best not to look like a typical Western saw, it looks like. But from all accounts, they're pretty good. All right, across, like right across from it, you have a utility knife section. And these utility knives are pretty good. Uh, not a... Not a problem that I see with them, and uh, just various cutters of different kinds and scalpel blades and such. But the ones that I really prefer to use if I'm going Japanese, let me see where they are. Here they are. Are their Tajimas? And a lot of people know about Tajima overseas, um, and you see a lot of a lot of brands other than Tajima here. But I really like Tajima. They feel sturdy. They aren't like cheap plastic. They feel really good. I have a pair of um, let's see. I believe just one of these possibly possibly this one i might have cheapoed out on it but it still felt uh, good yeah like think six dollars and eighty cents and then get 30 percent off of that and that's what i paid for uh, a really solid utility knife so pretty cheap pretty cheap all right next we have a display kind of near the the uh the engineer one was to the right of this and actually you'll see oh wait these are the saws okay so the saws were to the left of the engineer and then also cool that's where we are. This is their Primo pliers, like dikes and uh, linesmen that they like to show. And most are Fujia. They have in the top left, they have the engineer. Again, just a little bit of a selection. And then they have their Fujias. And these gray handles here, those are my the F Premium Fujia pliers, which I actually have a few pairs of these. And they are not good, not great. Um, I was hoping for some good cross hatching on the pliers. They do not have them. Fujia is allergic to them for some reason. A lot of Japanese pliers are actually. The only one I've seen with cross hatching have been the engineers, and those have like really been for screw extraction. But anyways, they they open weirdly. They're not made in Japan. I do not recommend the F Premium. Now, when we get to these orange handles, I have them made in Japan. 
they, there doesn't seem to be much difference between the orange and blue handles. There might be different head on there uh, for cutting. Who knows? Obviously, those are dikes, but there are blue handled uh, dikes and then orange handled uh, dikes as well. But these linesmen's, uh, I believe I got, yeah, one of the bigger ones, 225 millimeters. They are silky smooth on opening. They they feel great. They cut really good. And they're a solid, solid, like, beginner linesman's, as I felt. Because I have Knipex linesman's as well, the insulated ones. And they feel a step up, but, like, I cannot be more happy for the price I paid for them. Really, really solid pliers. Anyways, they have dykes down here. And as you go lower, as you go lower, you get smaller, obviously smaller pliers. But also when we drop down from the Fujio, we start jumping into these off brand like FG, whatever that means. Now I have, uh, I have tried a few of these, right? Weird little brands. And they have like a bargain bin here at the bottom and they get super cheap and not good. So Stay to the top. The same applies, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, in American stores. The eye level is the best. That's what I remember. All right, we move to the into the actual tool section, right? The aisle, because there's really one big aisle of tools, of like regular tools. And as you walk in, you have their selection of screwdrivers. Now, on the right here, geez, I, that's very sensitive to move over. On the right here, they have like these weird little kind of rinky dink socket sets and like uh, hex key sets and things like that and uh, I, I didn't bother to take a picture their better stuff is not here on this section but here they have their actual screwdrivers and for all the talk of Japanese screwdrivers and their their amazingness they don't have a big section in this store like this is it and yes even their like bin down here is full of vessels and they have lots of vessels here and they're like the ones you'd think of right I have a pair of these and they're um, they're pretty pretty reasonably priced, and I've been wanting to look at this one right here and get that one. I haven't bit the bullet on that, but they have vessel, they have a apex, I think is what it's called, annex. I don't remember device as well, but that's what they have. This is all they have here. And uh, if you want to get more variety, you can go on Amazon.jp or as we Americans over here call it, Japamazon, and you'll get a bit more of a selection. So I'm a bit uh, sad on their screwdriver selection. You'll notice they have these uh, VDE, before I move on, these VDE handled um, screwdrivers. They come in only flat and Phillips, number number two Phillips though. I have uh, both of, one of each actually. So maybe I'll use that. I really like the ball handles. All right. Right across from them, they have their wire stripper section. So you'll see typical wire strippers and shears and automatic wire strippers cable cutters, crimpers, there's these wire strippers, there's the shears up there, cable shears. All right, so these, I have a pair of these devices, one of the first tools I ever bought in in life, actually, a few years back were these. And uh, then you also see these little vessel handles here. Vessel also makes wire strippers. Now, the problem, if you can tell, with both of these they are not, whoa, they are not rounded and they are not shaped, it seems, for a human hand. I don't know why, but these little rinky dink handles, they do not work very well. They, they're, they're weirdly shaped and not at all uh, made for human hands. It, that's, that's all I can say. It, they don't feel good after a while of using them and they feel too small as well. Maybe my hands are too big. I don't know, but, you know, some Japanese are, are regular sized people, you know, so. I feel like you, you should have a, a better example of uh, handles than this, which is just a, a bigger handle with a with a weird, with a really weird type of stripper, all-in-one crimper, stripper, uh, like screw cutter, that kind of stuff. They have this, and I had a pair of these just to try it out, right? And Fuji is a really solid brand, like one of the best brands here. But um, this tool let me down, and I've seen after this that there are other brands with with uh, this style and I just for the life of me don't understand it I haven't seen anyone use these I've tried it myself and they just feel ungainly anyways at the end of the day I donated this to my work uh, when we have to strip wires and cables there um, we don't do that intensively but we do do it occasionally for for my job so this is a better one than they had before and purely based off the the um, blade for uh, stripping other than that, though, not a good tool. Do not recommend. 
Uh, I have not tried the automatic wire strippers and these crimpers, but they're here. They're here. And then as you can see, I took a picture. We'll see more of. They have the cable cutters. Cable cutters and more shears. And bolt cutters. There we go. Oh, I guess that was it. Well, you saw them. Right next to the bolt cutters are the wrenches and crescent wrenches and such. All right. And then if we take a look, pipe wrenches and things. The prices aren't too bad, especially if you're uh, jumping 30% down. And they seem really solid quality. Also, there are some really big ones here that I don't imagine ever using anything like that. But it seems that the cheaper tools have the rubber handles for um, for whatever reason. Because they have, it, it's the same tool on the with the full metal handle just covered in, in a rubber gripping uh, grip, which makes it obviously easier to grip. Maybe, who knows, but they're always cheaper. Same with the ratchets, which I'll show you. Um, yep, that's what they have here. And then over here, opposite their other ratchet wall, they have this, which are big ratchets with weird spiked ends that I haven't seen before. Maybe, I, maybe I'm missing something, but I have never seen these like weird spiked, oh, excuse me, handle. Now, maybe you, get, you can get more torque on it if you start grabbing the end of that, but I don't see why it has to be. Maybe it's for less weight. Who knows? But they just look like dragon teeth to me. I don't know. All right, across from those weird ratchets are their socket and ratchet, regular ratchet wall. And you have wrenches, regular wrenches, um, box wrenches, I believe. Although I don't see any box wrenches, I just see regular combination wrenches. Anywho, they have socket sets, mostly metric, obviously, regular ratchets, and then a whole bunch of sockets here. And you can take a look at the prices. Pretty expensive, it seems, for just one socket, but I may be out of the loop. Who knows? Regular sockets, they have all types of sockets, and ratchets. Yep. All right, we're getting now, I think, towards the latter half of this. Yep. All right, so this, I went, looked down the main aisle for power tools, and they have a Makita section. And their Makita section is this entire wall, this entire aisle. And you go from, like, 40 volt power tools down to 18 volts down to 12 volts and i believe it stops at the 12 they don't go they might go down I, they do have a, a few like 1.5 1.8 volt tools for like really really um i guess low low torque necess, uh, necessary low use necessary kind of tools but uh those are pretty cheap and it goes all the way down to Vacuum cleaners and coffee machines and, and lights of all kinds, right? Work lights. So I took a little video going down. It's super fast. You also see they have coolers and things. It's super fast. I thought it was a better looking, but you'll you'll get a vibe maybe a little bit closer if you want to slow it down. Uh, on the opposite side, they are like Hakoki, Ryobi, Black & Decker, things like that. But yeah, they brought out the, the green carpet for these tools, as you can see. All right, let's see. 40 volts, you get the 40 volts in whatever color, the 12 volts in whatever color, 18 volts in whatever color. It's really cool. I got myself a nice looking 18 volt, but here are some tools a little bit closer up. I was dodging around some Japanese people. This is a popular section. Yep, you get speakers, coffee machines, lights, vacuum cleaners, the whole nine, right? And then a look at the Makita banner and the aisle section. You can see the lumber on the other end. Okay, sweet. Turn the, make the video lower, um, like slow it down if you need to. All right, now what Matt wanted, which was the pouch section. Sorry, Matt, it took so long, but here we are. Here we are. Here are the pouches, half an aisle worth of pouches that they have in store. They have a lot of um, bucket pouches, especially towards the front. Lots and lots of bucket pouches. And really good quality ones, too. Then they have just regular type pouches as you go down with very interesting brands that I have not seen before and uh, I think you were commenting on the RAV the one I had you couldn't find it on amazon.jp well they're here they might only be here but they're here let me show you a different uh, further pick I took a few pictures for you and anyone else who wants to see it so these are the buckets 
solid buckets, right? I think the Fujia was my favorite bucket because it had tool storage on the outside just a little bit and then a few pockets on the inside. It's really nice. And you're only paying like low 20s for it. It's really good quality. All right, then we go up here. You have SK11, really limited it looks like. You can wear just one screwdriver if you want. That's interesting. Just put it in your pocket, but whatever. Um, regular tool pouches you can see, nothing crazy. Oh, there we go. Nothing crazy. These can all fit. Like up here, you can fit probably some Cobras in the back and then a, a good sized regular like 10 inch pliers in the middle. And then you can fit some kind of needle nose or, or angled head in the in that bottom right there. And then obviously the rest are for screwdrivers. So you can you can carry, you know, five, six tools, really solid tools. All right. As we move over, you get into the RAV4. Uh, it looks to not. Maybe I'll have another picture of it. Let's see. And some of them are hidden behind uh, plastic if they're really proud of it, which we'll see more of. All right, so here we go. I moved a little bit over. You have the, oh, as you can see, we only have a few more pictures left, but, man, I hate recording on the phone. That's life, though. These are the RAVs. I might be calling it RAV4. Who knows? It's. I think that might be a Toyota. I'm not a big car person, but... Yeah, here's some more RAVs, and they are not bad, not bad at all. They seem, they seem well made, and not bad. Fujia, they also have dipped their toes into the pouch game, and uh, kind of limited, and not there's not much going on. Like this is their biggest one that you can wear, which has four tools, <laughs> four tools, two scru two screwdrivers, two pliers, really, um, which is not that great but light on tools. All right, you have uh, this E-value. I have uh, one thing of, one E-value, by the way. Where is it? Right here. It's just a parts, it's a parts uh, bag that I have that I'll have on my left hip. Very light, very cheap, as you can tell. It's like seven bucks, something like that. Seven bucks and some uh, change. And then I took another picture here, but then we move into Spider brand. I would not want to walk around with that bright red on my side, but... I guess some do. I haven't seen it before, but maybe some do. And then device up top. And lastly, we have the side here. Device has some like covered, covered pouches. It rains a lot here in my area, right by the sea. So it's very windy, always very rainy. So if you're out and about, especially um, up in the sky, working on a working on a three-story house or a or an apartment building, which they they build vertically here, so they're always up high when they're working. Um, you might want to have your tools covered. Yeah, so then you have Jeffcom. They put all their stuff in bags, I guess, afraid of something. But uh, yeah, they don't seem too bad. I don't really like the yellow-black combo for that, but you know, it might work for somebody. Jeffcom. And then bigger spider bags right here. You can see the carbiners on the, on the top, but it, the spider bags kind of spill over on the bottom left. And with these tool pouches... Those that cardboard is there, yes, but it's very stiff. Like it's not going to collapse. That that uh, the big the big uh, pocket is not going to collapse once you take the cardboard out. It's very stiff and it will maintain that shape for a while. For a while, and then you see some Tajima covered. Yep, yep, yep. All right, that is uh, the tool pouch section, and we move on to the last couple, I believe. Yeah, this is the last one, and this is just hammers. Hammers, which is not a great selection of hammers. A lot of wooden handled, a lot of um, ball peen handles, uh, and a lot of these style hammer heads. Don't know what's going on there, but no claw hammers. So I had to go more far afield, which is Lowe's online, <laughs> to get to get me a, a, a hammer that I could use, let's say. So anyways, that is what we have for... Uh, homes, and uh, yeah, on, on to the next part of the video, I guess. All right, thanks, uh, thanks again for watching. Let me know if you want me to go more in depth on the tools or another part of this, of this hardware store, Homes. I know I went a little bit fast today and there was limited on pictures, but uh, I didn't want to spend three hours just taking dedicated pictures of every side of the store if, I, if no one cared but myself. And uh, so, yeah, let me know and uh, maybe we'll see it in the next video. All right. Thanks for watching.